तस्मा श्री गुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रस्ता भूतले श्रीमति भक्ति वेदांता स्वामी नामने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवारी पश्चाचते सतारिणे वंचकौपातरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु बाये वचा पतितना पवान एभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधार श्रीवास दि गोर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वे आर रिटेलिंग द पास्ट टाइम्स ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा इज टोल्ड इन द कृष्ण बुक दिस इवनिंग वे आर ऑन चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन प्रेयर्स बाय इंद्रा เราเริ่มค่ะเทศนาการนะคะวันนี้ก็อ่านมาจากหนังสือองค์พระขวัญคริชนานะคะในบทที่ยี่สิบเจ็ดชื่อบทว่าพระอินทร์เจ้าแห
ากจะต้องรู้สึกละอายนะคะในการที่จะการทําแบบนี้ต่อหน้าผู้คนนะเพื่อนก็เลยไปเป็นสถานที่ที่ลับนะคะที่ไปเจอคริสเตนเป็นสถานที่ที่ลบซ่อนนิดนึง Indra is the king of the demigods, and he has a crown on his head, and is very effulgent, dazzling. And if people see him bowing down in front of a little boy like Krishna, they, he thinks it will be very embarrassing for him. <laughs> เครื่องประดับเยอะแยะเต็มไปหมดแล้วถ้าเกิดว่าตัวเองเนี่ยจะต้องมาโก้งลงกราบให้กับเด็กน้อยคริสต์าเนี่ยก็จะรู้สึกเหมือนกับเสียหน้านิดนึงก็เลย so they picked a place just at the side of Govardhan Hill แล้วเลือกสถานที่ที่ใกล้กับภูเขา Govardhan and Indra came with Surabi and Indra uh, Indra knew he'd been offensive. He'd, he'd, been, he'd made a great offense against Lord Krishna. Indra was thinking that he was very powerful within the universe, and he thought there was nobody over him. So, so Krishna arranged this pastime just to make Indra humble. So Indra begins to offer prayers to Lord Krishna, and he tells to Lord Krishna, tells Krishna that I was very foolish, I was very proud. Indra says, Indra says to Krishna, I thought you had offended me. You didn't allow the cowherd men to perform the yagya for my benefit, so I thought you were offending me. I thought you were taking my, my, my sacrifice, the sacrifice that was meant for me. I thought you were you're taking it for yourself. But now I can understand that you are actually the supreme personality of Godhead. I can understand now that you are not, you don't have any material qualities, you are fully transcendental. Everything about you is transcendental, your name, your fame, your form, your qualities. And the only way we can go to your abode is by doing great austerity and penances and becoming free of all of our passion and ignorance. And if anybody thinks that you're an ordinary person, just because you appear in this world like a human being, if they think that you're ordinary, they're foolish, they made a big mistake. Mm -hmm. 
สั่งกันทั่วไปอันนั้นเนี่ยเนื่องด้วยความโง่เขลาของเขา Actually, you are the father of all this cosmic man of all the material world. You are the father. And you are the you are the real spiritual master of the world. And ev everything in this everything in this world belongs to you. And if you want to punish anybody, if you want to punish people in this in this world, you can do it. You see, there are many foolish people in this world who think they are the supreme. But you are so kind to them. You, Lord, Lord Krishna, is so kind to them that you arrange to take away their pride, and make them humble. And then they, then they come to know that you, you are the supreme personality of Godhead. So you have the right to punish people when they do wrong, when they don't behave properly. So as the father of all living entities, you always think for the good of all of your children. And if any of your children do wrong, you have the right to correct them. So you, your appearance on this planet Earth is very auspicious. You make this planet auspicious by you coming, by you taking birth on this planet. And one of the reasons why you appear on this planet is to is to correct people who claim to be God. So there's always some some living entity, some people they want to be the leader, they want to be the controller, they think they are God. So interested, I was one of these people. I was so foolish. I was thinking I was the supreme. But. You have so kindly corrected me and brought me to my senses. So now I have come to surrender unto you. 
So this is the real purpose of you coming to punish people, envious people, just like me. So Indra says, I committed a great offense at your lotus feet. I was proud of my material opulence. I didn't know your power. I didn't know how great your power was. So I'm a very big fool. So please forgive me for being so stupid. And please bless me that I will not be so stupid again. Please remember, I am your eternal servant. So you come in this world to protect your servants and to destroy the demons. So I'm trying to be your servant. I don't want to be a demon. Please help me. So Indra said, you are the supreme person. You are the son of Vasudev. And you are the master of all the pure devotees. You can appear anywhere, wherever you want. You can take your birth. You can appear in any form. But due to my ignorance, I created a big disturbance in Vrindavan by bringing all the rain clouds and making a big flood, making a big storm there. <laughs> I had been, I became angry because you didn't let me get my sacrifice. But you were so kind to me, you took away all my pride. So now I have come to you to surrender to your lotus feet. I know you are the only supreme controller. You are the spiritual master of every living entity. So Krishna looked at Indra and smiled and then he spoke in a very grave voice just like the rumbling of clouds. 
คริชนาก็มองไปที่พระอินทร์นะคะแล้วก็ทรงยิ้มแล้วก็พูดกับพระอินทร์ด้วยน้ำเสียงเหมือนกับฟาโร So though Krishna is only in the form of a little child, you know, this time he's only like seven years old, but his voice was not like a seven-year-old child. His voice was like the clouds. So he was, he was very serious. So he says, in, uh, Lord Krishna says to Indra, "I stopped your sacrifice to give you my mercy." I want to. I want to, to remind you that I am your master. I am the master not only of you but all the other demigods as well. Anybody who becomes opulent in the material world. It is only by it's by my mercy that you get any opulence. It's not by your doing, but it's by my mercy. So I can show mercy to anyone, and I can punish anyone. I am the supreme. I am the. I am the. the I am above everyone, so I have that right to do as I like. When, when I when I see somebody very proud, then I have to take action to correct them. And I take away all their opulences. So sometimes Krishna takes away a rich. Somebody may be very rich in the material world, but Krishna may take away their wealth just to make them a better devotee. So when that happens, that's a special favor of Krishna. So. When a when a person tries to be a devotee, but at the same time he's attached to material things, then Krishna will take away his material opulence just to help him to surrender. So, this was Lord Krishna's instructions to Indra, and then he told Indra, "Now you go back to heaven, and always remember that you are not the supreme, but you are the servant. You are my servant." <laughs> And he told Indra that he should stay as the king of heaven, but be careful not to become proud. So, 
ระวังอย่ามีความโอหังแบบนี้อีก So then, the Sarabi cow, who had come with Indra, also came to offer her respects to Lord Krishna. And Sarabi cow praises Krishna that you are the most powerful, and you are you are the you are the the soul soul of the universe. The whole material world all came from you. And although Indra tried to kill all of the cows, which who are my family members, the cows in Vrindavan, they're all related to me. And Indra tried to kill them, but Lord Krishna was so kind; he protected them. So Mother Surabi. Cow says to Krishna, "You are the only supreme. No other god is supreme. Only you, and we do not go to any other god for protection. We only come to you." So Sarabi Kau says to Lord Krishna, "You are our Indra. We don't want this other Indra. We want you to be Indra." He said, "You are the real father of the whole material world." And and you protect the cows and the brahmanas. And you give also help to the demigods and protect the pure devotees. Archana, Archana, did you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Gurudev. You want me to say that sentence again? Yes, yes, Gurudev. I missed that. Okay, so that you protect the demigods and the pure devotees. So Surabi Kau tells Krishna, "We want to bathe you with our milk, because you are our Indra." So Mother Surabi Kau allowed the milk from her other to go all over Krishna to bathe Lord Krishna. And Indra also bathed Krishna. Indra used the water from the Ganges in the heavenly planets, and the, from the from his elephant, his elephant had the the trunk. His trunk was full of water, and it poured the water all over Lord Krishna. So 
So there's a lake there, and there's a small lake there at the side of Govardhan Hill where this incident took place. That's, I think that lake is called the Govinda Kund. And th that time Indra also gave Lord Krishna the name Govinda. He told Lord Krishna that this is he, actually a nice name for him. He is the one who protects the cows and the senses. So Lord Krishna was very pleased with Indra and also with Surabi. He forgave Indra and he was happy with Surabi. When they had come there, Indra was a little afraid. He was because he didn't know what Krishna was going to do to him. But Surabi was very ecstatic. She was so happy because Krishna had done such nice service to protect all the cows. And so Lord Krishna was pleased with all of them. And all the residents of the higher planets, all the different demigods from the higher planets, they all uh, showered flowers on Lord Krishna. They were all very happy. They were singing his holy name. And when the, everybody was in a very happy 